you messed it up. You're stupid. All right, so today's Daily Dose of Stupid, this one is a strange one. And I don't think that it really needs a ton of introduction, so I'll just get right to it. It's Joe Biden talking. And I know that that's not much to go on, but uh, when it comes to crazy Uncle Joe, that's really about all you need. So here it is. And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand and it get hot. I got a lot of I got hairy legs that turn that 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 that, that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down. So it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. And I tell you what, the men, they're now all men. The guys I work with down here, and they're all guys at the time. They're all good men. Most of them made an awful lot of themselves. And Earl Larkin had a rough time. And some of you knew Earl. I, def I came back as a public defender. <laughs> okay. Joe Biden, for the, <laughs> for the vast majority of his political career, has been a gaff machine and a half. Like, that's, that's something that just comes with the territory for Joe Biden. But usually his gaffes are just something goofy or he says something, I don't know, absent-minded it. That was a full-on train wreck. Like, that's not just like telling, hey, everybody to stand and telling the guy in the wheelchair to stand. Like, I mean, granted, that's bad. But that's at least a mistake that you could kind of get, oh, well, he just wasn't thinking or something like that. Like, I have no idea where the crap that came from. That was so <laughs> far out of left field. <laughs> I... <laughs> There was nothing in that snippet that could even be mistaken accidentally as a coherent thought. <laughs> he starts rambling on about hairy legs and then roaches and then something about guys that he used to work with and in the pool kids would rub his legs and sit on his lap. Like, I have no idea how to even react to that. It's, it really does look like we took several different snippets out of like a 30 minute speech and jumbled them together and, and, you know, shook them up in a bag and then threw them out randomly. But that's one complete clip. That's him talking completely unedited. And I have no idea how he even came up with that. First of all, and I say this as a professional communicator, you should always be incredibly cautious when ever discussing anything about body hair. <laughs> like That tends to gross people out. You don't want to do it. So that's an odd choice right out of the gate. The strangest line, though, the strangest line in that whole exchange is where he talks about kids running up and sitting on his lap, and I love when kids run up and sit on my lap, and I'm just like, oh, gosh, Joe. I've never bought into the idea that Joe Biden is a pedophile. I don't think that that's the case. I just think that he's super, super creepy, especially with kids. Because he's also super creepy with women, like adult women. But he does sort of similar creepy things with little kids. And I don't really understand why. That may be like a psychological thing because he lost his son at a young age. or I, I don't know. But the point is the dude is creepy around kids. If you already have a reputation of being creepy around kids, you certainly don't talk about how much you love it when kids run up and sit in your lap. Like, I get that it was probably completely innocent, but oh my gosh, it looks horrible. Like, the optics on that are garbage. <laughs> the fact that Joe Biden just goes stumbling through that whole exchange. This is why a lot of Democrats are understandably, incredibly worried about Joe Biden being their candidate. Because of stuff like that, that you just watch it and you, first of all, you can't look away and you're like, what on earth is going on? Like what it really does remind you of, and I'm not trying to make light of this. I mean, obviously that 
you know, event was pretty funny. But what it does remind you of is if you've ever had a relative that they're just, they're getting on up there in years, every once in a while, they'll just start rambling for a few minutes and you have no idea where that thought came from or, I mean, granted, sometimes your younger relatives can do this too, but especially older relatives, they're getting at least just a touch senile. That's kind of what that looks like. And I mean, Joe Biden is not exactly a spring chicken. And so I think that there are a lot of people, frankly, on the right and left that are both understandably worried about Joe Biden's health mentally looking like that. Now, out of the field, he's still the most viable candidate. He's still the one that's doing the best against Trump. He is still, polling-wise, the front runner. But you look at stuff like that and you have to ask, is that going to affect the election? Because I think that it's got to at some point. Because once things like this stack up and, and he's already had a few events kind of similar to this, then it becomes abundantly clear that the guy's basically just, I mean, being wheeled up to the stage, dropped off there, allowed to ramble for about 10 minutes and they wheel him back off the stage and then go to something else because they're afraid he's going to say something else insane and completely incoherent. That is going to really start affecting the way that people make their choices, both in the primary and in the general. Now, as I understand it, Trump's roughly the same age, but he doesn't look the same age. And I think Trump's age does work against him from time to time. But for whatever, you know, Trump's flaws and, and very many valid criticisms, he, to my knowledge, he's never had anything that looks like that. I mean, that was sheer unadulterated nonsense for about 60 seconds. And I have no idea where he was going, where it came from or where it was leading to because he goes into something completely different afterward. And he was talking about something completely different before. It's such a weird, um, it's almost like, you know, you go throughout your normal day, it, like an episode of the twilight zone. And then like something just completely out of place, like a dude with a, a, a dog for a head walks by and you're just like, what just happened here? It was a really strange moment, and I think that Democrats are justifiably wondering, is this guy competent enough to run a national campaign and, you know, maybe even eventually be the president? Here's the thing that it might actually help Democrats. If President Obama decided he wanted to endorse somebody like Bernie Sanders or you know, another, can I would think that he would endorse Sanders if he was going to endorse anybody. But if you wanted to endorse Sanders or Buddha Judge or somebody like that in the primary, that's his out. All President Obama has to say is, well, look, Joe Biden is, is a patriot and he's a, you know, national treasure. We love him, but he's getting kind of old and we can't have him in that kind of position anymore. So I'm going to endorse someone else. Now, the problem with that is if you endorse Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders is just as insane and senile as Joe Biden. So that excuse wouldn't really work if President Obama wants to endorse him. He still seems like he's a little bit more lucid than Joe Biden, but that excuse kind of doesn't work as well if you're talking about endorsing Bernie Sanders. But most of the other people in the field, yeah. Because Elizabeth Warren is roughly the same age as well, but she doesn't seem nearly as old. She doesn't look nearly as old. And so that that excuse is going to placate a lot of the people that were expecting President Obama to endorse Joe Biden. So maybe that works out. That may be the only advantage to that, is that Joe Biden can endorse somebody other than... Uh, sorry, uh, President Obama can endorse somebody other than Joe Biden and then other Democrats can feel good about uh, that, that we're big fans of Obama going with that new candidate because of that. That may be the only thing that helps Democrats down the road, but that's the only positive I can see coming out of this. Because when your candidate is basically a, and I know I'm not trying to be morbid here or say that I, I want Joe Biden to die or anything like that, because obviously I don't, um, I care about him as a, a fellow human being and a child and a creation of God. So I'm not saying that to be morbid or, or anything like that. I'm just saying when Joe Biden looks like he's basically a, a, a walking corpse at this point and has almost no energy and 
it just kind of spits out nonsense like that, that's not a good look for him and his candidacy. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.